So we've got this suit where um, basically it's just like a coverall. So you see the sort of thing um, forensics teams will wear it so that they're completely covered from head to toe. It's, it's protective gear, basically. And what we're going to do now is take you um, to X2, one of our lecture theatres, to show you this suit uh, in literally a different light. Sam is using a laser dye. Laser dyes were an invention of the late 1960s, early 70s. Until then, you could only get lasers in one colour, and that colour was red. So it's rather like this laser here. This is a modern laser, so it's not quite the same colour red, and the old ones were really big. Yeah, I see. All right. And then in the late 1960s, people discovered that if you took certain sorts of dyes, you could produce lasers where you could change the colour. They called it tuning the colour. So this is something that's uh, introduced into uh, the laser setup. It's called Coumarin 540A, uh, and you can see from the lid the colour. The dyes they used had to be highly fluorescent. That means that they would absorb light and then emit it again. So this is the actual dye, the dye crystals, and what I'm done with this is actually dissolve them in methanol and even without putting UV on there you can see it's a really nice vibrant um, yellow. And like all fluorescent molecules the one that Sam's using which is called Coumarin 540A is a molecule that has a lot of double bonds next to each other. This is what is called a conjugated molecule and the more double bonds that you have next to each other, within reason, the more strongly a molecule will absorb light. If Neil now puts the um, UV light on the solution there, even without turning the regular lights off in the lecture theatre, you can see how brightly that's shining right there. The laser dyes have an important property that the exact wavelengths of light they give out, the colour, depends on the surroundings of the molecules. So you can dissolve the laser dye in different solvents to get slightly different colours. And there's a whole table here talking about dissolving it in different solvents. So with this solution, Neil had the absolutely brilliant idea of using it as a paint. And so the reason why I brought the suit in is because we've painted a really nice design on it. And Neil is going to be our mannequin for today and he's going to wear it and uh, show us exactly what it looks like. We need to get Neil to actually turn right around and then we'll kill the lights and turn on the UV. Ready? Three, two, one. So what do you think? Coumarin, normally if it's in solution, fluoresces with a sort of yellow light. But when it's in the solid, as Sam has done in her painting of the skeleton, then in the solid, for some reason, the surrounding of the molecules makes the light come out as blue. Laser dyes are sold specifically for people to use in lasers. And nowadays, lasers are used in a huge variety of different experiments. So it sounds specialised, but a lot of people want to buy these. What Sam has done is a very nice application of laser dye, but it's a very expensive way of making something that fluoresces, especially if it's just fancy dress. You could get just the same result by putting glue onto your suit and then sticking washing powder on it, because most washing powders fluoresce quite strongly. But Sam has used laser dye because Neil, our technician, is a specialist in working with lasers, so we had some, and it produces a much nicer effect than you would have otherwise. So, if you were doing an expensive theatrical production, a really exciting, horrible movie or whatever, you'd use a laser dye, but normally for fancy dress, it'd be far too expensive. OK, Neil, thanks, mate. I've heard of dyes called Coumarin. I would never have been able to say what its real name is, but Sam gave me a sheet of paper 
with the proper name written on and I'll read it out and I'll explain it as we go along. It's 2367 tetrahydro, that means there are four hydrogen atoms, 9 trifluoromethyl, that means it has a CF3 group, 1H, 5H, 11H, 1 benzo parano, 6, 7, 8 ii quinolazine, 11 own. The last part I wouldn't understand at all. I could sort of have some guesses, but it's easier just to look at the formula.